Check check the advertorial now. Check the advertorial. The meeting ID. No, check the 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 the, um, the Zoom invite link. You will find the meeting ID there. The meeting ID and the password is there. The one you want you got in your mail. Okay, we are on YouTube now. We are live on YouTube now. We can start recording. Got it. Got it. Now let me start admitting everybody in now. Uh, admit for. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to another time out with us on the Anchor on the Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects platform, another webinar. In a couple of minutes, we'll get the ball rolling. We just want to frame up on the back end here with all technical requirements. Please, at this point in time, I will implore us, please, all mics to be muted, all mics to be muted. We want this to be interference free, noise interference free. All mics to be muted, please. We implore you, we beseech you, all mics to be muted. You will only, you are only allowed to unmute if the need 
arises, please. Kindly just ensure all mics are muted. In a short while, in another four minutes, we'll get the ball rolling and the webinar will start. Thank you very much. All right, once again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues of the esteemed profession of architecture, our other professionals from other walks of life joining us on this call. It is my delight and pleasure to welcome you once again to a webinar on the platform of Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects. My name is Bodunri Ogutoye, uh, the National PRO for Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects, ANCA. And with me, I have a team, a crew, that uh, contributed to the success or the streaming of this uh, webinar. But before I, go on for, before I go further, please, I implore you, if your mic is not muted, kindly mute your mic. Second of, you don't need your cameras to be on. We, we will want as much, and we want to be able to hold the bandwidth in a stable and sustainable way. So if you are not the guest speaker or you are not the co-host, please turn off your camera, your video, your video, turn off your cameras, please. Turn off your cameras, please. If you are not the host or the co-host or the guest speaker, turn off your cameras so we can be able to, uh, our bandwidth can be able to sustain the uh, broadcast or the transmission as the case may be. Okay, before we uh, go further, I just want to welcome everybody once again. And um, it, the, we are on the webinar uh, team called the use of arbitration in dispute resolution. The use of arbitration in dispute resolution. Um, before we start, I would like to read out some, what I call housekeeping guidelines. Housekeeping guidelines are that this, uh, the, that which will guide us in the course of the webinar. First of all, like I re said again, I'll retreat again. Kindly ensure that all, all the time through the session, your mics are muted until the moderator says otherwise. So in case you need to speak, we will grant you permission from this end to unmute your mic. But this, the reason is to keep interference at a minimal or even to eliminate any form of interference. Second of, the moderator, of course, will request you unmute your mic during the Q&A session. When we are in the Q&A session, if need, then the need arises, I will, uh, I will request that 
you unmute your mic if the need arises. Thirdly, um, thirdly, questions. If you need to ask, if you need to ask questions, kindly use the chat box. Chat box. I can't see the Q and A here, so I think it's just the chat box we'll make do with. Kindly use the chat box to field your questions, comments, uh, in queries, and otherwise. Kindly use the chat box, please. Then number four, kindly deploy the use of the electronic wave of the hand if you desire to make a comment or observation during the Q&A session. Five, please use the chat box to articulate your comments, your remarks, otherwise during the course of the webinar. Please, like I said, please um, mute your mics, please. If you are not the host or the co-host, oh, please, please kindly mute your mic, please. Kindly mute your mic, please. Furthermore, please, can Amani, can you check the, 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 the participant whose mic is on and mute, please? Kindly mute. mute. Furthermore, please... At the end of the Q&A session, a link to end your CPD point will be posted. That's at the end, of towards during the Q&A session, we will post a link, we'll let you know at that point in time. And then lastly, lastly, if there are any immediate concerns, you may want to, you may require to raise to the moderator's attention Kindly send that to a number that will be posted on the chat box by my co-host here. Okay, without further ado, I'll just introduce and also appreciate uh, the back end crew and those who are with me on this broadcast, who are on the Anchor uh, National PRO and Media Directorate. I have with me here my amiable and competent co-host, Olua Fumi Beckley, is here uh, co-hosting the webinar with me. I also have Amani Mbanefo with me here, and also Mbanefo, and also uh, at the back end, helping us uh, with the uh, itineraries at the back end, we have Victor, then, of course, we also have uh, somewhere in the whole um, uh, participant viewport there, we have Francis Azubike, uh, who is a content and script creator, content and script creator uh, for the um, national, the PRO media team. And also we have, the last but not the least, we have Mike Matthew Uyi, who is a graphic artist who puts together our infographics and other design requirements. All right, thank you all very much for being part of this team and the support and the commitment and the dedication. Anka surely does appreciate you. So we, with, uh, we, without further ado, we go straight to this webinar, which happened to be on the 22nd of February. Today's date, on a lighter note, today's date is 22-02-2022, which in, in, uh, in uh, historic parlance, I would say, is called an Ambilogram, all right? Am I correct? Ambilogram or palodogram? Pal pal yeah, that is if you, if you look at it from the front or from the back, it's the same, co yeah, corridor. Thank you. It's from the back and from the front, it's the same thing. And we also have that our own uh, corridor in our own uh, 
local parlance, uh, in our own lo local name, that's Lawa. If you spell Lawa forward, is Lawa. If you spell Lawa backwards, is Lawa. The same thing is today's webinar. And what am I saying? Today's webinar promises to be very insightful and instructive and value adding all the way back to back. In any way you look at it, whether you're an architect, whether you're a QS, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a contractor, and you're on this call back to back, this webinar is sure going to be an eye opener in so many regards and in so many respects. So, uh, Going forward now, we're going to have to start the webinar. Um, I would like to introduce our guest speaker by reading his citation first. His name is architect Frank Evoha. That's the Edo State MD, Managing Director, Edo State Geographic Information Service. He's here with us on the call. So before I bring him up, uh, we'll just read his citation and uh, Gentleman, to do us the honor of reading his citation is no other than Oluwa Fumi Beckley. Beckley, you have the you have the floor. Thank you very much, Architect Bodwin. Our guest speaker today is Architect Frank Evonho, a 1990 graduate of Architecture, University of Lagos, Nigeria obtaining the bachelor and master's degree in architecture. Architect Francis is an alumnus of the prestigious Lagos Business School's Advanced Management Program, which he obtained in 2008, a two-term council member of the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria, ARCON, 2015 to 2021, an SWAL chairman, ARCON Education Committee, 2018 to 2021, a fellow of the Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects, ANCA, member, full member of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, NIA, member, International Facility Management Association, IFMA, and recently an associate member of the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. His professional career which began in 1991, spans several industries, including the construction, education, and insurance industries, right. as well as public service. Notably, project manager, Archiform Consultants Limited, 1991 to 1996, general manager, Ideal Homes Limited, Lagos, 1996 to 2002, staff architect, Corona Schools Trust Council, 2003 to 2009, Assistant Director, Projects and Facilities Management for Industrial and General Insurance, PLC, IGI, and General Manager, Chancellor Properties, 2009 to 2010, Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Works, Edo State, 2011 to 2012, Honorable Commissioner, Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, Edo State, 2013 to 2016. Pioneer Managing Director of the Edo State Geographical Information Service, 2017 till date. Please join us as we welcome architect Francis Evonho. Thank you very much. I, am I very audible? Yes, you are, sir. Oh, thank you so very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I don't know what's showing on my screen there. I'm having some issues. What are we seeing over there on the screen, please? Bodhuri, I need your help. Okay. Um, I can see your... Your, 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 you share your screen. I can see Anchor CPD series 2002 use of application in dispute okay. resolution. All right, that's, that's your slide, it. I believe. Okay, that's all you're seeing. Yes. Ah, okay. Then ah. it has some cranes at the background. Yes, yes, yes. Um, thank you all very much for 
having me today. Um, and I welcome you all to today's session, um, ACON accredited CPD program for Anchor on this auspicious day. I think the word Bordering was looking for is palidron. I remember that word because it won me um, a quiz competition when I was in the secondary school many, many years ago. Palidron is a word that is the same when you spell it forward and backwards, and anagram is the same when you read it upside down or the right side up. And today's date happens to be a palidron and as well as an anagram. So there's no dispute on that, I hope. Um, so our topic for today is use of arbitration in dispute um, resolution. Now, before we get into arbitration itself, I think let's have a little history lesson. I'm a proud um, Bini man, and I always like to use some of our history, historical lessons to teach on uh, modern day um, issues. Uh, dispute resolution, the untold story of Queen Ida of Benin. Queen Ida was the mother of Obaesige, who was the son of Oba Ozolua, Ozolua Nibarumi, or Ozolua the Conqueror. Oz uh, King Ozolua reigned from 1481 to 1504, was a great warrior, and is reputed to have sent an ambassador to Lisbon. The ancient Bini kingdom had um, consular services in Portugal. Oba Ozolua, however, had two sons from two different wives. Idubo Arwa and Osawe who was later renamed Esigi. And legend had it that both of them were born on the same day. But Idubo did not cry, or Arwa did not cry out, while Esigi cried out first. So according to Bini tradition, he was announced to the Oba, and the Oba pronounced him her apparent. Arwa was now sent to be the ruler of a village, the second largest village in Benin Kingdom, um, Udo is now a town, which incidentally is where I originate from, 32 kilometers away from Benin. And um, when our great Oba passed on and joined his ancestors, a dispute now arose. And the dispute was on who was the rightful successor to the throne. This dispute unfortunately degenerated to a civil war between Benin and Udo. And Queen, S Queen Idia, sorry, whose mask you are seeing, a uh, representation of her face made in ivory, the mask you are seeing on the left of the screen, helped her son to win the war by raising an army. And at that time, we also had neighbors who were always fighting with as well. And uh, one of them were the Galas from um, Ida Kingdom, another very large kingdom. And they saw the weakness in Benin because Benin was undergoing the civil war and quickly invaded the Northern Territory to take it over. Legend has it that Queen Idi had dressed like a man mounted on a horse, rode by the side of his son, of her son, and drove back the invaders and they helped to secure uh, the, uh, the Northern boundaries of Benin Kingdom. Now, so therefore it's not surprising that the military chose her mask. Um, an ivory mask made 500 years ago as the emblem of Festac in 1977. By the way, for those who are interested in history, this mask today is being displayed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, courtesy of the Rockefeller Foundation. Don't ask me how Rockefeller got it because that would be another dispute. So disputes and claims are fairly commonplace in construction. And if you notice the theme of this slide is construction. I want to make my attendance. Uh -huh. Actually, Jerry is speaking. Um, okay, there's somebody who's. Um, is there someone who wanted to ask a question? No, really. Please go ahead. Okay, kindly mute your mic. Thank you. So, okay. So, dispute and claims are fairly commonplace in construction, as I was saying. And I chose the theme of this presentation to be construction because this is our field, it's what we're all familiar with. However, resolving disputes can be very, very costly. It, it, it costs you time, it costs you emotional energy, it might even cost business relationship and definitely cost a lot of finances. Therefore, it's very, very critical to an architect to understand disputes, dispute resolution and the options available. Um, although historically disputes have often resulted in um, eternal um, conflicts, litigation and other 
peaceful alternative resolution methods are now favored in today's world. And before talking of arbitration, which is a type of alternative resolution method, I will want to dwell a bit on alternative resolution so that we are familiar with all the methods available to us. Kindly note, this is not a formal training in arbitration or alternative dispute resolution. It is not. It's, it's more, this is more like a, um, a know your topic kind of presentation. It's like an introduction to the presentation. Um, and this is because arbitration or alternative dispute resolution is a highly technical um, field. And um, learning about it is totally outside the scope of this um, presentation in one day. It will take you several days to learn about alternative dispute resolution. Um, and, I, and this became a topical issue when Bodino and I were discussing because we realized that architects often get carried away with design and construction. And so uh, in our bid to be the master builder, we often forget that there are several other disciplines. I'm sorry, and my thoughts are being interrupted by the constant um, interruption from people who are not muting their mics. Can I kindly request that everybody make a deliberate effort to mute their mics, please? Please, I can see some name, uh, some people whose mics are not muted. Please, everybody, even if you believe your mic is muted, just look at it again and make a conscious effort to mute it so that we can all enjoy this um, session. Thank you all so much for cooperating. If not, Baduri, we will need to open up uh, disputes proceedings against them um, with our upsets again. So, as I was saying, we architects tend to get so carried away with being the master view that we forget that there are several other things we need to learn about uh, dispute resolution, business um, formation, um, accounting, even law, there's several other aspects we need to learn about as architects. And I expect and I hope that the Institute will invite um, speakers from other disciplines to come and teach us architects about the other ancillary disciplines we need to master in order to master our environment. I therefore recommend very strongly that we all get professional training in arbitration and ADR. ADR is alternative dispute resolution. And there are several institutions um, set up to help us uh, get this training. I, I, for instance, I, for one, am a member of the Nigerian Institute of Chartered um, Arbitrators, an associate actually, and this is one of the um, numerous um, institutes that can provide us with professional and um, in-depth training on arbitration and ADR. Um, the institutes are all over the place. There are several, and a simple Google search will show you the ones that are very close by to you that you can learn from. So what is ADR? Alternative dispute resolution or ADR is a legal means of resolving dispute other than litigation. ADR is backed by international and national statutes. Even states have laws governing ADRs. Several states now have multi um, door codes that allow you to employ any series of ADRs to solve your disputes. Why ADR? Well, for one, it enhances access to justice. As we know, our courts are heavily crowded and um, justice grinds slowly because of the numerous technicalities and steps you have to, to undertake. And so ADR reduces these steps. And because ADR is available to basically any profession, there are so a lot of practitioners of ADR out there who are willing to assist and help out in dispute resolution. Secondly, ADR also, like I said, because of the um, lower number of steps you need, also perhaps allows us to arrive at justice expeditiously and at a much lower cost than going the full length of litigation. ADR helps to preserve professional relationship between parties. Parties in dispute um, who, which end up in litigation often tend to become adversaries or enemies. But ADR gives you an opportunity for you to maintain your relationship while resolving disputes. ADR also allows you to maintain uh, privacy 
of the contract in question and safeguard trade secrets because the third parties that come in only come in because there's an agreement between the contending parties. And finally, it definitely reduces the load on the formal court system, allowing us to, again, assess justice much faster. Let me leave us here with one or two quotes. I was scrolling, trolling through the internet and I found one or two quotes, which I found I thought would be very useful. And that's, this one is from one Sandra Day O'Connor, who holds that the courts of the land of this country should not be the places where resolution of disputes begin. They should rather be the place where disputes end after alternative methods of resolving disputes have been considered and tried. By the way, she's not a Nigerian, so this is true for, I, I guess, basically all countries of the world. And I also want us to leave this at the back of our mind that conflict will only survive when we agree to participate in conflict. Uh, you cannot fight oneself, so, so to speak. Now, there are several types of ADR, but I'm going to limit myself to just these seven main types, uh, which is more common in Nigeria. The first being arbitration. Now, arbitration is a process where a private tribunal, either as an individual or a group of individuals, is appointed by mutual agreement of the parties or by uh, um, a judge of a, of a relevant court to determine a dispute and render a final judgment. Now, this judgment is enforceable in the court of law. So um, an arbitration tribunal can be one person, one arbitrator, or multiple, maybe three, five, depending on the parties and, and the conditions they've set for arbitration. Another uh, method of ADR is negotiation. Uh, which is a situation whereby the parties sit down together, everybody is used to this, and try to resolve their differences to arrive at a mutually beneficial um, and agreeable solution. However, when those two parties are unable to sit down and reach an agreement, they might invite a mediator um, who will now come in, not to judge, but to try and direct the discussions and negotiations in such a way as to allow the parties focus on areas of mutual benefit and mutual interest on which they can reach agreement. You can say mediation is a kind of um, assisted negotiation. A further step to that is um, conciliation. Now, conciliation is a process by which the third party of the conciliator actually now brings out areas where he feels, look, you can resolve on these issues here. If we focus on this and focus on that, this issue can be resolved. This is different from mediation in that in mediation, only the parties talk, um, reach all the decisions. And the mediator is only directing the parties um, to ensure that it's not confrontational and so on. But in conciliation, the conciliator comes up with suggestions of what can be done to resolve any issue outstanding. A fifth method of alternative dispute resolution is adjudication. Um, essentially, this is when somebody, a third party, uh, preferably who is uh, very conversant with the legal aspect of the dispute, um, is presented with the issues of the dispute and the adjudicator makes a decision and puts that to the party. Um, however, adjudication is not final and um, it's only enforceable if it's agreed upon by both parties or the parties may decide to go through arbitration or go through um, litigation. A sixth method is expert determination, which is similar to uh, adjudication, except that in this case, the expert is an expert in the issue, not necessarily the legal side of the story, but in the topical issue. For instance, if the quarrel is about supply, the expert in this case might be a procurement expert who would then take the claims of both parties and attempt to reach a settlement for them and determine who is right and who is wrong. Why the last type of ADR that I will consider for today is uh, the ombudsman, basically an individual that is employed by government or organizations to receive public complaints. And then using methods of mediation and so on, the ombudsman tries to resolve these issues or at least present with recommendations for resolution of the disputes. Now, this is a diagram which I adapted from um, uh, 
It used to be a diagram which I adapted from um, a construction resolution as um, enumerated by Chong in 1999. Um, and it shows us the steps of dispute and their resolution. And as we climb up the steps, you notice that hostility will escalate, more and more time will be spent. And of course, that means it will cost a lot more money. And it all starts from, I mean, dispute starts from when both of us are right. Um, you are right, I'm right, both of us are standing our ground, there's a dispute because my own idea of right is pointing to the west and your own idea of right is pointing to the left, to, to the east. And so we're in a standoff. However, because every human endeavor is likely to have a dispute or two, prevention is a very, very good way of resolving disputes. Um, in this case, you will have even put in some incentives to resolve the dispute in, 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 in like clauses that helps you to resolve your dispute without necessarily having to go to litigation. Arbitration clauses are one of them. You, you may have other clauses that you want to put into your agreement that will help you to uh, ensure that when disputes do arise, it will be a lot easier to resolve this dispute and move on. However, if uh, disputes have arisen, obviously our first step is to talk about those disputes. And we move to the next stage yeah. of disputes. And that next stage, simply is we sit down and try and negotiate our way out of it. And then basically you realize that what you want and what I want may actually uh, happen to both of us if we take a third direction. In other words, if we try and get a win-win situation, we able to resolve our disputes at a very early stage. Um, but when this becomes impossible, we then have to consider other means of resolving our disputes. And there are two main other means of resolving disputes. Through using ADR mechanisms that employ non-binding resolutions or um, using a mechanism that will have a binding resolution at the end of the day. Now, when we are talking of non-binding resolution, it means that whatever comes out of that ADR mechanism has to be agreed by the parties. And the, of course, those agreements have to be quickly signed upon so that it becomes binding uh, even in the law court. And I'm talking of mediation or conciliation or adjudication. If any of these mechanisms are deployed and one party does not agree, it is non-binding on that party. Now, if both parties agree or, the, or all the parties agree and then they sign off on it, the resolutions that come from mediation or conciliation, adjudication, or even expert review becomes binding. Now, if that is not sufficient to solve the dispute, then we need to move on to arbitration. And arbitration is binding, arbitration is protected by law. It is not particularly um, appealable. We'll get into more details with that as we, as we move on. Or at the end of the day, if arbitration doesn't solve the problem, then we have the final option, which is litigation. All the way to the Supreme Court, if necessary. Note, however, that as we continue to escalate, as we continue to escalate our resolution of the of the dispute, that up to the non-binding resolution, it is possible to maintain very good relationship, business relationship with your uh, the partner that you are disputing. Okay. However, by the time we move to the issues of binding resolution, somebody will be left standing, another person will be on the floor, and it becomes more and more difficult to keep professional relationship going at that um, level. So very quickly now, before we settle down on arbitration, um, the several steps that we will need, it doesn't matter really which of the mechanisms of ADR we employ, these seven steps remain valid or for resolving um, disputes. The first is to identify the issues that are in dispute. The second is to understand everybody's interest. In any dispute, all sides have an interest. And um, you will not be able to solve any dispute if you disregard one side's interest over another side's interest. The best approach is always to attempt to go for a win-win situation where everybody takes something off the table. And so you list out all the possible um, solutions and options available. 
evaluate, evaluate this very um, carefully and select an option. And once this is done, the agreement must be documented and signed off on for it to be valid. Um, if it is not signed off on, a party can come tomorrow to say I did agree and so on and so forth. So to settle down now on arbitration. Now, arbitration is one of these, uh, as we, have, we may have surmised, is one of the processes available under the alternative dispute resolution um, scheme of um, mechanisms for dispute resolution. And it's a process, like I said before, a private tribunal, either as a group or an individual is appointed to determine a dispute and render a final decision. That final decision is called the arbitration award. And that final de decision ends the matter. It's not um, particularly um, um, appealable and it is binding on all parties that, are, that have agreed to undertake the arbitration um, process. But there are conditions before which you can activate arbitration. I am not going to go into the Process the, the procedure of carrying out arbitration because it's highly technical and again is beyond the scope of this presentation. And I hope that as many as are in this um, as many as are in this seminar today will go further to get formal training on arbitration. It's a field that is mostly peopled now by lawyers, but really architects and engineers are also uh, needed in large numbers to populate this field. Because at the end of the day, we, we, we generate a large amount of uh, disputes to be resolved. Now, for arbitration to be activated, there must be a subsisting contract between the parties. And the contract itself must have stipulated somewhere that arbitration will be a path, a path towards um, resolving disputes. And this can come in as either specialist clauses inserted anywhere in the contract or a separately executed arbitration agreement that is tied to the contract. But there must be a contract and there must be an agreement to use arbitration. Now, a properly drafted contract or a properly drafted arbitration agreement, properly drafted contract or a properly drafted arbitration agreement would have listed out the number of arbitrators to be employed, bearing in mind that it's not a very cheap option. It's, it might be a bit cheaper than litigation, but it could really balloon up in cost. And so a proper agreement would have specified the number of arbitrators to be used, whether one, three, or five, maybe. And how these arbitrators will be appointed will be specified. Now, in a situation where the parties find it impossible to appoint uh, an arbitrator, what the, the party who is, um, who is um, originating the dispute can approach a court and ask the court to appoint an arbitrator or arbitrators as the court may please to help to resolve the disputes. Um, bear in mind also that once arbitration is included in the contract, judges would tend to refer your case back to arbitration even if you choose to go to litigation first, because it is a um, law of the land that once arbitration is in the contract, you will also need to carry out uh, that process first. The other condition for arbitration is the rules under which you want your arbitration to be carried out. Now, because there are several institutes, professional institutes, governing the rules and procedures of arbitration. Uh, I, for one, use the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. They all have their set rules and process for running an arbitration. Uh, so a very good uh, arbitration agreement will also specify the institutes that you will need, that you, you want to use um, to govern your arbitration um, process. Um, most institutes will, will get their rules and proceed and try and ensure that it conforms with the uh, UNCITRAL model law on international commercial arbitration. Uh, UNCITRAL stands for the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. And they are the um, global body that governs 
um, arbitration, international commercial arbitration among different uh, nations and entities with the international uh, reach. And so most local arbitration institutes will ensure that the arbitration rules and proceedings follow the best practices as uh, enumerated in under UNCITRA. And again, an issue that's very important to note is that um, I have seen several contracts and all you just see is a clause that says, oh, in case of dispute, this will be referred to arbitration, full stop. Now that's a very bad arbitration clause because it hasn't said anything about how many arbitrators you're going to use. It hasn't said anything about the rules of arbitration that will be deployed. And more importantly, it hasn't said anything about the place and language of arbitration. I mean, it would be very, very difficult for me if I take Royal China restaurant, for instance, to arbitration, and somewhere along the line, somebody has inserted that it will be in Katonis and that the place will be in Benjin. And meanwhile, this for a dispute that is in Benin City, I will be at a very huge disadvantage. And that is why also in formulating your arbitration agreement or in formulating your contract, it is extremely important to put in the place for the arbitration and the language to be used, whether it is English language or Yoruba, whatever language it is, should be placed there and agreed upon and signed the contract executed by all parties. Finally, um, different national laws um, approach arbitration in different ways. Um, it's a bit beyond the scope of this um, to start talking about the different national laws, but please understand that arbitration is a quasi-judicial um, um, procedure. And so its um, steps and procedures are actually heavily governed by law. In Nigeria, it's governed by the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, CAPS A18-2004. And that um, act has step-by-step -step procedures for how arbitration is supposed to be governed in Nigeria. Now, I, I wouldn't be surprised that even though the act has attempted as much as possible to, to be in conformity with what um, on Citra recommends, I won't be shocked if in Ghana, for instance, there are some nuances that, and differences that can place a Nigerian who is there unwittingly at a big disadvantage. So in drawing up your contract, it's very extremely important to also state the laws under which your contract is and, and its arbitration are uh, to be um, run. Again, I will only speak on about four um, major types of arbitration as I see it. If you Google arbitration and types of arbitration, you will be shocked. There are several variants of um, arbitration depending on which part of the world you are in. Now, the four major ones that I see as I see it in Nigeria are one, domestic arbitration. Now, for domestic arbitration, both parties or all the parties to the dispute to be arbitrated upon are resident and operating in Nigeria. And that, of course, will also probably include the arbitrator uh, and the place of arbitration. So for that, for that to qualify as a domestic arbitration, everything is happening locally within our laws. The second I would like to look at is international arbitration. Now, in this, one, at least one of the party is a, foreign, is a foreigner. It lives or resides outside uh, Nigeria. And, and, and that happens a lot. We have a lot of foreign business partners and we're all doing all sorts of business trades together. And so once one of them is out or is not in Nigeria, you might find that the rules for arbitration may change a little bit to cater for the other person's uh, nationality. And closely allied to this is international commercial arbitration, which basically international commerce is actually one of the main reasons why arbitration became uh, came into the mainstream. And this is an arbitration that happens when the dispute is between arising from a commercial contract uh, is against a party whose controlling body is outside Nigeria. And I give an example. MTN Nigeria is a Nigerian company. Now, if I have an arbitration issue with MTN Nigeria, for instance, it is expected that it should be domestic, right? Because MTN Nigeria is Nigerian and I am also in Nigeria. But this may not be so because the controlling shares for MTN Nigeria resides with MTN, which is in South Africa. So this now moves the arbitration 
to an international um, commercial arbitration uh, purview. And therefore, the rules and procedures are bound to change. And the last uh, type of arbitration I'll be looking at uh, this evening is um, institutional arbitration. Now, smart, uh, um, smart dispute resolution or smart dispute prevention means deciding very early in the day of the contract how we we'll resolve disputes. Um, playing the ostrich game of saying, ah, it will not happen, God will not agree, doesn't really, doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. God does not like disputes, yes, granted. But we are all human and we disagree over things and disputes arise. So, so plan, the being a smart planner is to even choose the particular type of institution that will govern your arbitration right from the beginning. And um, in this case, um, the institution or the institute would either appoint an arbitrator in case a dispute finally arises or nominate uh, arbitrators from. So, and this is very helpful in a case where you may not know um, where to get competent and qualified arbitrators to, to help out in, your, in the matter. Now, some notes on arbitration as we are, are beginning to, to round up on this. Uh, an arbitration agreement is binding on all parties to the executed contract, even if it's just a clause that refers to submission of the arbitration as dispute resolution. It's binding. Once you, have, once you have an agreement to use arbitration, you have to use the arbitration. And like I said before, arbitration is backed by law, national, international, and even state laws. Several states now have their own laws on arbitration. And so it's important in our own local environment to study the laws of arbitration that operate in our local environment. And then... Um, once the arbitration process has begun, you can no longer say, I'm no longer, I don't want it anymore. Uh, you cannot say, oh, because the arbitration award is against me, I will not accept it. It is, it is sacrosanct. The arbitration process will continue whether a party agrees, um, withdraws after starting, after starting the process, whether a party withdraws or not, the arbitration process will continue to its final determination. And the award will still be binding. Amen. Then finally, an arbitration award is enforceable in court. The winner of the award can easily approach a court of law and ask for this arbitration award to be enforced by court judgment, and the judge most likely will oblige. Now, I have said before that arbitration um, awards are not necessarily appealable. However, the ACA Cap 18 does allow us to have um, steps, um, does can void, can void arbitration, but using particular steps as enumerated in the, in the uh, governing law. I didn't go into the legal um, steps for voiding an arbitration because it's very technical, very complex. I think lawyers are better positioned to explain that to us. And it, this is one of the reasons why I say, please go get formal arbitration training. Don't just depend on what you hear today. This is just an appetizer and a teaser to a beautiful and wonderful vista available to us. Now, the Supreme Court over the years have listed out several disputes that cannot go to arbitration. A dispute that arises out of an indictment for an offense of a criminal or public nature cannot go to the arbitration. Disputes that arise out of illegal contracts or invalid contracts cannot, cannot go to arbitration. What's an illegal contract? There are several types of illegal contracts, but I will just dwell on one a contract that is entered into by force, by coercing the other party, will be declared as illegal in the court of law and disputes arising out of that contract cannot go to uh, uh, arbitration. 
Dispute arising out of agreements are avoid by being way of gaming or waging. Now, this is interesting for me. So apparently, um, if you deal with Bet Niger and the other kind of um, wagers, and there's a dispute arising from it, your only part is litigation. You cannot take them for arbitration. Well, that's interesting. Matrimonial disputes cannot be arbitrated upon. Any agreement purporting to give an arbitrator the authority to give judgment in realm cannot be arbitrated upon. Now, what's an authority to give judgment in realm? A judgment in realm, a judgment in realm, it's a judgment against the world, so to speak. For instance, I may have a dispute again. Um, let me use um, this time, let me use um, mobile. I may have a dispute with mobile that I bought um, petrol from their station. And by the way, that's a contract, it's a legal contract. I bought petrol from their station because they made an offer. I took up the offer, I paid for it, and service was rendered. And I have a dispute with them. Now, an arbitrator cannot now give a judgment against all petrol dealers across the land. You can only give a judgment against the particular entity for whom you have a dispute. So that's what they mean by judgment in realm. You cannot make a global uh, arbitration award against every entity everywhere in the world, but all arbitration judgment must be uh, personal. That is, must be personal to a person or an institution. Disputes arising from grounds of public policy are not um, arbitrable. If last man takes your car, and you decide that you are not happy with it, you cannot carry LASMA to an arbitration panel or tribunal. You can only take LASMA to a court for litigation. Tax disputes are not arbitrable. There's, a, there's an appeal court judgment on this that says clearly that issues of tax and tax um, disputes are under the exclusive jurisdiction of the Federal High Court of Nigeria and so cannot be subjected to arbitration. And the dispute arising out of insolvency and bankruptcy can also not be arbitrated upon. So in concluding, um, it's very clear that dispute and conflicts are integral parts of any society and that any methodology or mechanism that is used to resolve them has to engender an atmosphere of peace equity, social justice, and development. Now, justice denied, they say, uh, justice delayed, they say, is justice denied. And for several of us, we find out that justice is very much delayed because of the heavy congestion of our courts. And this has resulted in several governments in Nigeria in opening up numerous multi-door courts and allowing citizens access to various ADR mechanisms to resolve that disputes. One last point we must note is that litigation almost always leaves broken relationships and shattered collegiality, while arbitration, on the other hand, are better suited to resolving disputes and conflicts in situations where future relationship and future business matter to us. And as architects, I know that repeat business matters a lot to us. Thank you all very much for giving me your time. I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Frank. Thank you very much, Dr. Frank Abraham, for that uh, delivery on the use of arbitration in dispute resolution. Uh, thank you for that insightful instructive session, though. Like uh, you, um, earlier mentioned that it's just an overview. It's not an in-depth study uh, of, of uh, arbitration. It's just giving us an overview of what is obtainable and how we may explore and begin to look into the area of arbitration in the use of resolving conflict, especially where the relationships matter. You know, business relationships matter and we want to secure that relationship going forward without leaving it shattered or, or, you know, or in disarray. Thank you so much. Um, 
I, I think at this point, before we keep the Q and A session, I want uh, my co-host Oluwa Fumidi to do a recap. To give us a recap on, like, a summary on what architect Frank, the delivery architect Frank, just made in a bit. So over to you, Oluwa Fumidi. What are the salient points we are able to capture during the course of the lecture? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. In the course of the lecture, in the course of the lecture, we were able to get a number of very salient points, and um, part of which you can see is that. Uh, Dispute resolution, alternate dispute resolution is actually a, is actually a number of them, and um, arbitration is one of them. And um, there are other aspects which are um, Arbitration, negotiation, mediation, conciliation, adjudication, expert determination, or good smart. The speaker went on. The speaker went on to talk about uh, the resolution matrix, which actually starts uh, gives an insight into how how disputes are resolved from when they are initiated to the final uh, resolution. Prevention actually should be the first thing in mind. How the fact, the fact that uh, disputes might, will always arise in the relationship, in contracts and uh, the clause, the contracts must always have a clause for uh, uh, dispute resolution is very important. And that it should be well spelled out the language of uh, resolution and the place of resolution. Went on to talk about negotiation, direct negotiation, standing neutral, we talked essentially on non-binding resolution and binding resolution. I went on notes on dispute resolution, it says we should identify the issues to be arbitrated upon and understand everyone's interests we must list the possible solutions and options. With options, with motions, we must document the agreement and we must agree on contingencies, monitoring, and evaluation. The speaker also went on to give us an in depth um, view of what arbitration is. We also went on to conditions of arbitration. Um, as stated and uh, given by the United Nations UNC trial, um, which, which must be contract based, there must be a subsisting contract for any resolution to be considered for arbitration. Any conditions, any disputes to be considered for arbitration, there must be a contract you know, uh, instituted. There must be an agreement. There must be mutually agreed, uh, agreed arbitrators by the parties involved in the dispute, they must agree to the uh, quality of the arbitrator, the number of arbitrators. We also went on to talk about the rules of arbitration as uh, demanded by the country where the dispute is domiciled. This is very important when dealing with uh, transnational disputes where foreign uh, parties are involved. The laws governing dispute resolution in those countries must be taken into consideration in drafting the contracts. We also talked about place and language of arbitration, which is very important. Uh, whether English or any other language, it is very important to state the language in which uh, the uh, dispute will be resolved. We also went on to the laws governing arbitration, um, and it went on to the types of arbitration, domestic arbitration international arbitration, international commercial arbitration, 
institutional arbitration. We went on further to talk about arbitration agreements, statutes on arbitration, which in Nigeria is uh, backed up by the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, CAP 18, 2004, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. We went on to talk about the sanctity of arbitral proceedings, the enforcement of arbit arbitral awards. He also went on to dispute not arbitrable in Nigeria, first of which is indictment of, for offenses of public or criminal nature. Number two, this arising out of illegal or invalid contracts. Number three, is disputes arising under agreements void as in by way of gaming or wagering. Matrimonial disputes. Number five, any agreement supporting to give an arbitrator the authority to give judgment in REM. And he went on to give an example of a contract between a customer and a mobile, uh, where you can't just um, give, a, give a global uh, judgment, but you must deal with the institution in particular, not the whole community of uh, of that organization. He went on to uh, disputes arising from grounds of public policy, uh, tax disputes, and uh, insolvency and winding up of operations. Then in conclusion, he gave us uh, a summary of the fact that disputes and conflicts are integral parts of any society and, uh, and any human endeavor. And thus, any methodology used to solve them needs to be engendered to engender an atmosphere of peace, equity, social justice, and development. And finally, we said litigation in the dispute resolution, more often than not, leaves broken relationships and shattered collegiality. Arbitration and other ADR mechanisms are thus better suited to manage conflicts, relationships and future cooperation matter. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity for that um, recap of the lecture that was just handed out. I, um, I want to know, um, Architect Frank, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. OK. Um, I want to, before there, are, I can see electronic hands raised before we, we, are, we are now moving into the Q&A session. Okay, before I say that, um, please kindly look out very soon. We're going to post the link for the form you'll fill to be able to earn your CPD or account CPD points on this webinar. So just look into the chat box. Shortly, we'll post that link. So in the course of before the webinar uh, uh, shuts down, please fill that form, enable to fill the form so that your data will be captured accordingly. Um, after Trump, yes, um, I want to ask the, the, the area, the issue of um, the type of arbitration, institutional arbitration. Yes. Um, how does it apply here with regards to our regulatory body and the regulator? How does it apply? Okay. Now, by regulated, uh, regulatory body, I have to assume you are talking of ACON? Yes, please. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, ACON is not an arbitrating um, institute. Uh, in fact, ACON is not an institute at all. Now, um, yeah. it, it's a government um, I, body to, I, to regulate. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, I'm a woman. And um, <laughs> now, yeah. several institutes similar to what uh, Anka is doing, uh, Anka is set up for architecture and architects. Several institutes are also set up for arbitration. And I did mention uh, one or two of them. At the risk of being accused of advertising, 
Um, for instance, the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators have been uh, in Nigeria now for decades, and um, it's peopled by judges, lawyers, engineers, architects, and that is all they do, arbitration. That is all they do. And so they handle arbitration as a professional discipline. Um, I do not think um, ACON is um, um, positioned to do that. I think what ACON is positioned to do is what she's doing right now, which is in helping architects to professionalize and to in, improve on their professionalism. Um, so there's a big difference between architecture and arbitration. The arbitration includes technical issues from our own point of view, from engineer's point of view, from the lawyer's point of view, from the quantity surveyor's point of view, because disputes happen across board. It's not, dispute is not tied to any particular uh, profession. It happens totally <laughs> across board. All the human endeavors have to be, to be resolved. So, and uh, if I add your question to one of the questions I was reading, I was reading some of the charts. Somebody said, um, yeah. where do I get uh, yeah, about, about training? Well, Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators is one place you can get formal arbitral training. I think there's another one for construction. Uh, I don't know the full name of that as well. But again, you can do the simple thing of um, typing arbitration training in Nigeria, and then um, you'll be fed with a wealth of information on where we can get formal training on arbitration, which includes a, a training a lot of legal issues that we, we need to get our heads around in, um, in, in solving disputes. Hello, Baduri. All right, thank you very much for that clarity. Um, I think um, we just move to those who have raised their hands. Um, I'll ask, I'll kindly ask, um, um, what was it called? I see a hand, electronic hand, David Musa. I'll ask you to kindly unmute your mic. You can ask your question. Your hands are, your electronic hand is up. David Musa, you can go ahead and ask or make your comment. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, just like you said, my name is David Musa. Uh, I'm actually a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, United uh -huh. Kingdom. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Architect Frank did an excellent job indeed. And you see, I will also encourage, that's before adding what I want to add, the architects to warm up to this. You see, most of these things are left for the lawyers, which is not good. So it is very, very important for us to, you know, see a need for that. But then in addition to what he has said, uh, arbitral awards are not appealable, right? Mm. They are not appealable. However, there's a condition in which an aggrieved party can approach a court, can go before a court with an application, to set aside that award. That is when there's an additional award, meaning that when the award goes beyond the brief of the submission, I mean, made to the, to the arbitral, I mean, to the arbitration tribunal. Thank you very much. Absolutely, I said, Musa, you are very correct. I didn't want to go into all those technicalities um, of what will lead to an award being thrown out in court or being set aside. Um, going outside scope is one, um, misconduct of the arbitrator is another, and there are several other issues, and they are clearly outlined in um, the ACA CAP 18. So yes, thank you very much for your comment. All right, thank you, welcome. Yes. All right, thank you very much. David Musa for that um, for lending your voice to this conversation. Thank you so much. Um, to further in the Q and A, I see another hand up, and I will ask Ayodeji Olorunja to unmute his mic. I've asked you to unmute. 
can go ahead and ask a question or if there's a comment you want to make on observation, I will take your long that please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bodoin. Um, I want to first of all thank Anka and thank um, uh, seminar speaker, Frank, very well for a wonderful presentation. I'm Ayodhi Jelonda, I'm a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. I don't know whether that has any meaning anymore. Um, I just want to make a few comments for Anka and for the profession generally. Um, when we became architects in the 70s, the, the, the contract law and land law were part and parcel of what we studied in the university before we graduated. And when I joined the Institute of Architects, you know, one of the things we looked out for was to look out for the next generation. And like uh, Actor Frank said, at the beginning of his presentation, he said something to the effect that you, we concentrate more on being master builders. Now in the days of old, the, the architect designs and also builds and does everything. Now, thank God that there are multiple disciplines, you know, coming out of architecture to form different professions now. But we must not lose the core values of the architects. And we must not lose the opportunity for the young architects to find job. One of the things the architects can do is arbitration. The Absolutely. condition of contract that we had in those days that we, I still use on my projects today, says clearly in the arbitration clause that arbitration will be referred to the Nigerian Institute of Architects. It is still legal. It's legal to use architects as arbitrators. And I'm not saying we should not get the training. Oh, you know, Dr. Frank made that sense. You know, made that comment very, very clearly to us. We need to get training, but we do not have to deny ourselves the opportunity of being arbitrators by including in our contracts as architects. You that the arbitration will be referred to the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Now, if that is done. You find that, like I have participated in many arbitration, arbitration uh, and arbitral tribunals because of that simple clause. Now, you find that it is easier for the architect to understand the clauses and the nuances of the contract, like engineers also, than lawyers. If lawyers take over the thing, it becomes another court. So please, in as much as we do all of the things we are doing, let us be mindful that the generation after us also need to be able to find work. Architecture is becoming so narrow that these guys won't find something to do. That's my comment. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Um, that was a very uh, welcome contribution there. I appreciate that. You, you, you made a selling point, which was a question I tried in a way to explain uh, to architect France. You, 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 you did a home run there. Thank you so very much uh, for that uh, lending your voice. Architect Frank, is there something you want to add to that? Yes, I, I, I think that comment is uh, superb. And I thank you very much, sir. Um, one, for listening in, and two, for that excellent point. And that's the, the, the difference between your point and the point Bodwin was trying to make, is that he was talking, Architect uh, was talking about the Institute why Bobby was talking about ACON, the regulator, and there's a need to differentiate between the two. Um, can the institute like ANCA, an institute or an institute like ANCA, um, begin to have training in um, training for so arbitration and all that? Why not? It's just getting the right faculty in place. Uh, because, I mean, we, that's why I've been saying that we need to get trained, because in getting trained, which will become faculty. Because I, in, in one of my trainings, I was taught by a professor of architecture on arbitration, but he's not, he didn't do it under the auspices of NIE or under the auspices of ANCA. So, prepare, like I said, along that right to point now, if we prepare architects and architecture, architects definitely have a big role to play in arbitration, but we have to prepare for it, we have to prepare for it, and we have to work towards it. It's not a given anymore. 
Unfortunately uh, for us, we think many things are given. We are master builders, we are project managers, we are this, we are that. But a lot of those disciplines are gone now. And we just have to prepare and become specialists in them. And then we can pass it on to other people. So thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you to both uh, the two last speakers. Thank you. Um, I see a uh, hand raised, and it is the hand, the hand, the electronic hand raised, but I want to. Uh, information. Uh, information. Uh, to this particular hand. Who is this? Hand? The, what do you mean? Please put the hand okay. of the um, architect. Yes, the I... BOT chairman. The BOT yes. chairman. I, huh. the, I'll ask him to unmute his mic now. Sir, Architect yeah. Justice Okabai, sir, you can kindly make your contribution, sir. Um, thank you very much, um, Architect uh, Frank Owen and uh, Bordering for this program. I I remember when I did, when uh, um, Bordering approached me some time ago about arbitration webinar on Anchor platform. I said, look. I'm more, I'm more practical and I need somebody to do the more theoretical aspect. And listening to Frank today from the beginning to now, I, I, I felt justified because he has done a thorough job to the, to the theory and background for arbitration. I've enjoyed it a lot. In, in spite of my 30 years plus in arbitration, I, had, I, had, I mean, I didn't have the opportunity to have this grounding before I actually started uh, arbitration. But like the last speaker said, arbitration clauses are normally where these institutions of arbitration and so on have just come up. In the RIBA form of contract, it was dispute should be referred to the RIBA. And when the Nigerian architects started, dispute should be referred to the Nigerian of architects. And I think also that we in Anka should now insist that our contracts entered by our members should also inside refer to Anka because they have the relevant training to be in, I mean, to, to, to handle our vision cases. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, Frank's presentation has been very, very rewarding and interesting. In spite of my years of arbitration, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, disputes are referred, I mean, are, uh, are not, um, cannot be set aside by any court of law. That is the award cannot be set aside. But just like the last speaker said, if you do not follow the procedure, a court of law can set aside the award not the content of the award because the court has no competence in questioning the content of the award, except it overshoots the, 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 the terms of reverend. But the nitty gritty of the technicalities, the court cannot set it aside. I have several uh, arbitrations that have gone, you know, to, to uh, have been challenged and they have been. Hello, sir. Architect Frank, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I think uh, uh, I'll by it to have his left by, by, by yeah. different okay. He's on, back. On, on very flimsy He's back. Uh, because the lawyers haven't taken that. That can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear we're me? We're back now, sir. We yeah. can oh, hear you sorry. now, sir. We, we lost oh. you in a bit. Oh, sir, I'm so, so sorry. You might, you might want to uh, just go back a bit. Okay. What What mm. I was saying is that some of the um, the, the issue of uh, setting aside arbitration award is limited to only the procedure. The mm. content of, of the award cannot that be set aside. Absolutely, sir. If you breach the proceedings, yes, yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the award is set aside. Not that the arbitration content itself is varied by the court. It cannot be. Mm. Even, as, as I was saying, one of the awards I, I gave is now before the Supreme Court. The reason I, I, I the reason the the the, the, uh, the lawyer the, the the lawyer who, who lost the case went out with children was that they just just before I gave the award, 
they, they, they raised a, a flimsy reason to say that the arbitrator was biased and stated some reasons. So the arbitrator should disqualify him, himself. I went through the procedure set aside, what all the communication between, between the arbitrator and the parties and all, and said, because you know that you, are, you, are, you, you, you have a bad case that you, you want the arbitrator to dis disqualify himself so that you cannot, you, so that uh, you, can, you cannot be punished. I, don't, I do not agree that I should disqualify myself. And I went on with, with the award. He went to the high court, the high court upheld the, arbitration, uh, the, the award. He went to the, the appeal court, the appeal court up, upheld the award. For the past two years, it has been the Supreme Court. I mean, I, I just get some feedbacks occasionally, how it goes. It is necessary for us as arbitrators to also follow up a lot of some of these things so that you, you, you are able to know your own strength and your own weaknesses. And a lawyer confer, uh, uh, confirm, I'm sorry, confessed to me some years ago that architects and engineers are better arbitrators than lawyers because they address the technical issues and we should not shy away from it. Uh, lawyers have just, uh, have just intruded into arbitration. I remember some 20 years ago when I, when I had an arbitration procedure, a lawyer approached me that he would assist me at no charge so, so as to understudy how we architects handle arbitration. arbitration. That's a lawyer. And most of the, the, most of, most of the seminars at, they were, were holding at that time about in, the, in I mean, in, in the nineties and uh, two thousand and so, they were mostly attended by lawyers who were not trying to see an inroad into arbitration. So I, I I support the idea that we should encourage architects, technical people, engineers, when the surveyors to get more interest in arbitration, so that they can address the legal, I'm sorry, the technical aspect of disputes, which nobody apart from them can really question. That is my contribution. So thank you very much, uh, Frank uh, for this incisive uh, presentation. Thank I, I thoroughly much. enjoyed it. Very thank nice to have your voice again, Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, sir, for blending the voice of experience there. We really appreciate that. Uh, it's a very welcome uh, contribution in the whole scheme of this presentation. Thank you so much, sir. I see more hands up. More hands up. Um, I'll ask um, Sobe Chuku of Paraji, please kindly uh, unmute yourself. I've asked you to unmute. You can speak now. Yes, thank Sobe you Chuku very much. No thank you very much, uh, presenter. Um, thank you, sir, for a very, very, um, like you said, not such in depth was a teaser. I was actually very attentive to this presentation because uh, it was a field that um, I've had, unfortunately I've had one or two experiences dealing with private clients. Um, not personally because I wasn't the, I was not party to the agreement, I was, I was privy to knowing what was going on. Now there are some times that clients or rather parties to an agreement, even though like you said, they are party to it, they don't really necessarily go through all that is documented, all they want is that the project is executed and done. And if at times some of these clients are um, institutional clients and they take it to court, or I mean, in this case, non 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 or something in terms of arbitration, they don't necessarily agree with the case of the arbitration and they now take it to court for enforcement. Now, with the judicial system that you have a case, a simple tenancy issue may last for two years. How long will the courts, how, how will the court be able to, how will be able to get, um, um, let's say, enforcement from the court, knowing fully well that they have the cost of the congestion of the courts, one goes to arbitration, have an issue. That's my question, sir. Thank you. Right. 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 Yes, okay. It's an interesting question and the question that um, I have actually been in a forum where people were discussing this issue. Uh, unfortunately, what do we do about the courts? If the courts themselves recognize, government recognizes that the courts are slow. And, and that's why they started going into multi door um, courts and so on. But the law gives the judge the right to take a look at complaints. Like um, Architect Olorunda and Dr. Kavai has clearly said today, while the courts 
cannot change the award. The courts can look at the proceedings that led to the award. And that's um, and that is where there's nothing anybody can do about the courts. Um, and a, a lot of people have actually used that to try and frustrate arbitration by going to court. Like Dr. Kavai was uh, um, saying just now, they try to impeach on the character and integrity of the arbitrator. And uh, of course, an arbitrator has a right to take jurisdiction if he thinks is, is within his right, and he did so, and the courts have agreed, but it's going all the way to the Supreme Court. That's the Nigerian legal system. There's not very much um, we can do about the Nigerian legal system. Um, so that's why perhaps the non-binding um, resolution aspect of dispute, um, the dispute resolution begins to play in. You try and stop the dispute before it becomes an all-out war. When it becomes an all-out war, well, not much anybody can do but to see the war to the end. And I have a question of my own body. Um, I see several chats here, people asking for the presentation. Would that be within what Anka wants to do? I need guidance on Well, that. You, 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 you have um, sole ownership of uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the material, presentation okay. material. So okay. you decide how we want to travel on that. Okay. Well, this is Anka. So for Anka, I will distribute the materials as PDF. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that means that uh, the emails that we have in our data will we'll forward the, Yes, I'll we'll forward the PDF them. to you to forward to them. Yes. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, that's Anka for you. Then. Um, okay. Uh, we still have some hands up. But before we attend to more hands that are up, we're going to post in the chat box now the link for to earn your CPD point. It's a Google form that you need to fill your data there so that it will be on the spreadsheet that will be forwarded to the Archon CPD board for uh, scoring approval purposes. So the link is there right now. Berkeley, are you done that now? Yeah, that's the link there. So you can, as we continue in the sorts of the Q&A, you can as well just fill the form and just give an air to further in the conversation as it continues. So right now I'm going to ask, yes, Stephen, or uh, was it Uwagwe to unmute? Um, and you can ask your question. You, you are muted now. Stephen Uwagwe, you have the floor. Stephen Uwagwe, we we'll ask you to unmute. Okay. Um, Stephen Uwagwe, are you there, please? Okay, while we are waiting for even if we will ask uh, Charles Mbaize, Mbaize, sorry, sorry for wondering that. Yeah, please, kindly unmute. You can, I've asked you to unmute now. Charles Mbaize, you have the floor. Are you still there? Uh oh okay. Okay, I think there is a... I'm here, sir. I'm here. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Oh, please go ahead and ask Hold me. On. Yeah, Charles Mbezwe. Architect Charles Mbezwe is on the line. He's still on the line. Oh. Okay, go on, please. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, sir. So, in fact, eh, I've never... I've never it like this. It's so wonderful. And I really appreciate Anka. You know, for this lecture and all that, I really appreciate it. Sir, um, a quick one, you know, like a uh, school of arbitration or, you know, it's really on top. And I want to be part of you that will tap that. So I want to find out the school right now, do they have a school of arbitration in Nigeria or just that council of arbitration in Nigeria that holds that uh, merit center in Mitama there? 
I just want to know because, uh, in fact, you opened my eyes. Thank you so much, sir. You know, our senior colleagues, yeah. thank you, sir. You opened a lot of eyes and my own, too, to this arbitration thing. So I really, really am interested. And uh, I need to know if there's a school of arbitration here or that one that is set up in Metama, that's Nigeria Institute of Arbitrators and all that, and that panel. You know, that, that's my question, sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this, sir. Thank you. Right. Uh, Architect Fran, you want to address that, please? I, well, I am not aware that arbitration is taught in any formal school. What I'm aware of is several institutes uh, are offering training in arbitration. And one of the takeaways from this program is that we in Ankara, and I do know some chartered arbitrators in Ankara, we should also even start considering setting up something to help train our own people as well. So for now, I'm aware of um, NICAP, Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. I don't know whether they're in Maitama. Um, and uh, there are several other um, institutes of um, that offer training in arbitration. Um, so do a simple Google search. Um, you will not say university or this or university of that for now, but it's a professional training that you can get from professional institutions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. There's still more hands up. Um, uh, okay, um, okay, I think Ugo Chuku, Obua Gushan is up again, so I've asked you to unmute. Obo okay. Um, um, <laughs> thank you, Actor Frank. I appreciate your presentation. It is quite uh, insightful and educative. Um, my concern has been addressed. I think I've filled out the form that uh, you talked about uh, concerning our participation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, um, okay, uh, we have more hands. Uh, okay, I, I, I can see again, architect Ayodeji Olonga. I've asked you to unmute again. I've asked you to unmute. Sir, you can go ahead and make your contribution again. Thank you very much. It's just, case yeah, it's just a question. Um, I've, I've sent you a private chat. I didn't get the response. That's why I'm having to talk. Uh, oh, oh sorry, I'm having to combine so many things here. I know, I know, okay. and I don't want I don't want the chat to go away, and you know you won't have the opportunity of seeing it after the the, meet, the meeting. Now, the the first thing is I want to know you know about Anchor, and I sent you my email. Can you please tell me how I can become a part of you? And secondly, I need to know how because on the flyer with Akon there was no bank details. How do we pay for this seminar? Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that all, sir? Yes, that's all. Ask two questions. Okay. Bank detail. Yes. For to pay for this uh, webinar. Uh, yes. Which is okay. Yes, and also, what's the first question? Uh, to, how to you know details about how to join the anchor? So, and I sent you my email address. Okay. How to join anchor? And yeah. how to pay for this women. Okay, sir, you will do me a favor okay. to just ease uh, coordination for me here. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, what's it called now? I'm going to put a number right. in that. Beckley. Beckley is going to help us post a number right. onto the chat box. You can kindly contact the person with that number his name is francis azubike he will give you a lowdown of all of that and once he contacts you he will he will um i will ask him to get your details so i can personally reach out to you so i'm and further the conversation on how to join anchor and what are the prospects and all of that uh, uh I, I hope that is okay with you sir very okay thank you very much yes Hello. Hello. Uh, that is very, very okay. Are you still there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? That is okay. 
So we okay, can hear yes. you, I said, is that okay with you, sir? Yes, okay, sir. Sir. yes. Okay, so I think, Beckley, have you posted the number? Okay, sir. Okay. So I think uh, the, phone number is the, phone, is the phone number. You can just send a chat. I think. Okay, okay. I got it. Number. I got it. Uh, yeah, what about okay. payment? All right, sir. Uh, payment. Yes, payment. Payment, he will also address payment, sir. Okay. That contact detail will also address payment, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You are welcome in advance on board uh, the Anchor flagship. This is Thank your you. national PR. Welcome you warmly and going to give you a reception at one of the five star hotels to welcome <laughs> you on board as a senior member of Anchor. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I'm asking. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Omar Shaw Geraldine Nonyen. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. On Marshall Geraldine, I've asked you to unmute your mic. On Marshall Geraldine. Um, I think my network here is. Ask commercial generalist to unmute. Sir, you attended this in America. You attended this in America. No, commercial generalist. Commercial generalist, please. No, your yeah, name. Maybe Stephen Uwagwe then. Maybe, maybe Stephen Uwagwe. Uwagwe, please. Yes, I've, Stephen is my way. I've um, asked you to unmute. Um, I've asked for you to be unmuted so you can go ahead and make your contribution or if it's a question. Give me a word, please. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. I think, I think um, for the second time around, giving me a way is not responding. I don't know. Maybe it's a network issue from his end. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Frank, you want to say something? Well, okay. While I try, why we try no other question? Well, like I said, I will um, share out the slides, but I think I will add one or two slides on um, setting aside of arbitral awards. It was an issue today, so okay. I would like to enrich my presentation with that as well before I send it out. So, oh, thank uh, you so much. The slides may not be ready for you, but they'll be ready for me. Is that okay, buddy? Very okay. Very okay. It, it works well for us here to at this end to be able to have enough time to prepare to uh, send mail in that regard, send the material via mail in that regard. Um, Oh, okay. Hello, you can you hear me now, sir? Who is this, please? Hello, this is Steven. Actor Steven. Hello. Hello, this is Actor Steven. Oh, go ahead, Steven. We've been Actor Steven. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Please. We've been waiting Thank for you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Thank sir. You. I oh, must commend you for the exactly. presentation. Though you have said it's not detailed much in a broader aspect, but I must appreciate you for the presentation. Now, my question is this. In dispute resolution, most times on the contract document, what you see is between client and the contractor. And in recent times, we've had these experiences of building collapse, building failures, and every other thing. And the professionals seem to be on the limelight when it comes to this building collapse and building problems that we're having in the country. And if, uh, if I'll use, if, if, if I'll say this, what we normally have as professionals or as consultants is just a letter of commissioning, not actually an agreement between ourselves and the client when we are being commissioned to carry out these jobs. And when these failures of course, the first point of call is though, who is supervising that job, who designed that job, they try from that aspect then before we really come into contact with the contractor or the client. Now, can there be, because in this country, we don't have what we call a professional indemnity insurance that professionals present in probably carrying out a design or a job for a client. Now, can we have a contract 
And in that contract, this issue of arbitration being inserted in such contract between professionals and clients, because if eventuality does occur, you, you, are at your, you are at your own peril, you are at your own mercy. If you don't actually have a contract that says, okay, this is what your responsibilities are, this is your limit, and this is not your limit. Because at the end of the day, even if clients carries out some decisions that are prejudicial outcome that are detrimental to your own position in that job, it's assumed that the consultant is responsible for that. Can we draw up a contract that we equally say, okay, between you and this client, this is a subsisting contract between the professional and the client. So that at the end of the day, it could be resolved instead of going through the real legal means and your image is being dented and your relationship between you and your clients is being dented. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Steve. Um, your comments actually... Hello? Architect Frank, are you there? Your video view port is frozen, Architect Frank. I think that's a network issue there. Okay. Um, I think we'll wait for him to resolve that. Oh uh, there. Okay, hold up. Just in a bit, we'll try and get him back. Okay. Is he out? Actor Frank. Actor Frank, please unmute your I'm, mic. I'm, I'm back now. Can you hear me now? Okay. Hello, can you hear me? I'm back now. Oh dear. Okay. Let me let me Okay, yes, I can hear you now, sir. Okay, I can hear you now. So, can I go ahead now? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So, like I said, um, one of the big takeaways um, I got from Akeolo that was his comment about the standard form of the contract that we have to use as architects, which we have now jettisoned. Uh, you know, after Steve, the truth of the matter is you are supposed to have a contract with your clients. That is the truth of the matter. And your letter of award simply forms part of the contract. Yeah. And the one thing they say, if your client will not give you a contract, you give your client a contract. The client. So that all these things are clearly spelled out. Uh, I think uh, at the boundary, as an as an association, I think we need now to revise this standard form and issue them to all our car members so that they know that, look, when you are getting into a contractual, because a contract doesn't have to be written. If, if, if both of us agree, if an offer is made and I accept, even if it's verbal, it's a valid contract. Mm -hmm. It's a valid contract. So mm -hmm. the fact that the man has even given you a, a letter of commission mm -hmm. means that he agrees that there's a contract between both of you. And uh, if he's not going to give you the conditions of the contract, you yes. must say the conditions of the contract to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so yeah. it happens. So that way, we yeah. architects can protect ourselves. Uh, we need to be a bit more proactive in um, ensuring that the, the right things are done. I grew up knowing that this was the practice. The architects enter into contracts with their clients, formal contracts with their clients. Somewhere along the line, we have to mm -hmm. Our jobs without any kind of um, formal contract, and we need to start getting back to the old way um, of ensuring that um, we enter into formal contracts. Our friend, that's one. Two, there, there is available in Nigeria professional indemnity insurance. The challenge has always been costs. Um, what the insurance asks for as premium is probably going to be more than what you will make on the job. But the insurance is available. And by law, we are supposed to have them anyway when you do your job. Okay. All right. Are you, are you through with that? Um... Yes, I'm through with that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think I want to.
put it back and uh, we'll take you up on that. We'll take up the assignment, but uh, we'll kindly also want your input on that assignment, revising the standard form of contract. Oh, yes, and, uh, like, and, and catch Ladu Jones too. Ladu has a lot Yo, of Yo, definitely. I know, I know the big fishes to catch. I know them. I know a lot of materials on it. And we, need, ah, we just need to get back to doing things right. I believe he too is on this call. I believe he too is on this call. So that is heads up that I'm coming after him shortly, very soon. Yes. It's going to form part of practice manuals we need to develop as an association of uh, architects and all of that. All right, thank you very much. And there is another thing. I just got um, a, a quick text now from uh, Ola Dimeji Oyewale, and he says, mm -hmm. Akon has a sample contract, has a uh, contract sample, which is very true. Um, that I forgot to mention that uh, Akon actually also has a um, sample contract we can use. But that doesn't stop us from, as an institute or as an association, from standardizing it for our members. Um, yeah. Again, just like uh, as I said, we can even, as part of that standardization, include the use of the association as arbitral institutes. All we just need to do is build up our faculty, which should be very difficult to the quality of people I'm seeing here. Yeah. All right. Oh. Faculty coming up very soon. Well, they are the NDGIS, and I might just um, well vote you in as the head, <laughs> head of the faculty. <laughs> you can never know. You never know. Okay, I think um, we've had a very wonderful presentation, even as um, alluded to by our participants. We thank you for being part of this conversation. It has surely been a very incisive, instructive, and very uh, enlightening um, conversation. And I, if I may say, I think I, I'm confident that the, the, the vision for this particular webinar has been achieved in that it's, open, it's an eye-opener for architects to begin to see another field another place they could begin to play in that is arbitration so we need to take the requisite training uh, is sap in arbitration and begin to take up the rightful place that uh, the architect the engineers the qs as professionals in the built industry begin to take up that that space and begin to take ownership of that space because we have the technical expertise in this res respect to be able to uh, arbitrate in that regards. So, Architect Frank, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Before before I wrap up, I I see that the I see our president, national president, architect, know your doctor, architect, doctor, know your Omar Sone is on this call. And um, can someone help? Becky, can you help me start for him? I seem to, so that we can unmute. Okay, I think I've seen him. Sir, architect, Omar Sone, sir, I've asked you to, I've asked you to unmute. So kindly lend a voice to this conversation, sir. Uh, are you with us, sir? Yes, yeah, thank you, sir. Good evening. They told us it's supposed to have a pleasure, but I want to thank everybody. Matthew, uh, our new comer, we cannot welcome you enough. It's my brother, I thank her because we should have a set idea. I hope you can see the board. This also is the first one. The request I will make is to see the gentleman, the treating of the piano and the next question of the team. So thank you, 
Okay, it was a network issue from his end. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, I just wanted to be sure it wasn't from my end. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, well, I believe uh, um, the, 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 the summary of what uh, our amiable president is, is trying to say is that, look, Anka is about capacity, professional capacity development. And, you know, uh, placing the architects in the forefront of best global practices, yes, that is acceptable uh, in the international front, and that is what Anka has set out to do, and that is what we are doing, and that is what we will continue to do. That is why through channels and mediums such as these webinars, conferences, and uh, public lectures that we'll be having in future, we will continue in that stride and continue to build up until the architect takes his right, right, right and pride, a rightful place and pride of place in the community of the built environment and in the nation at large. Because an architect is a nation builder, he's trained to be a nation builder. So we are going to be nation builders in all ramifications, in all on all fronts, you know, with a with the right capacity that has been uh, built, you know, to do that. So we 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 take up the challenges as they come and surmount them, and we trust that through sound knowledge and well ingrained uh, uh, study, we'll be able to do justice to what the society requires and demands of us. Thank you very much, sir, for that. Um, for that. Uh, Architect Frank. Yes. Do um, you have a final word before I wrap up here? Before I. Uh, no. I, I think we said all okay, there go is. On, to, sir. No, I think we said all there is to say. I thank oh. everyone for, for listening to me. It's always a privilege to stand in front of my colleagues and share the little knowledge I have and gain as well a lot in return. Let's do it again very soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. You have done, you have done wonderfully well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I that, want that, to that is Dr. Queen. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Queen, that's our national secretary. Yes. Do you want to let a voice before we wrap up? Yes. Maybe you do. You, do, you give us a vote of thanks. Dr. Queen. Yes. Just to give an information. All right. Just to sir. give an information. Go ahead, sir. That um, the Nigerian Tata Institute of Arbitration, they are in the line of discussing with us and uh, with anchor process and procedure. Well, are in discussion currently. Did you get the message? Oh, that the I, I think I, yeah, in discussion with the we are currently uh, under discussion. <laughs> okay. Okay. The Your network is so on so training of okay. architects. Very good. No, okay. Um, great. Great. So great. great. That's very. That's a welcome development. Very good. Yeah. Great. Very good. Great. great. And actually, it's also. I was also in, in Key, in Lambert Bay. 
So by the time we finish up getting this to the public and tell us the modalities of how to be into operate uh, training. That's the information bit of information that I have. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. It's one of the reasons why I was late to this meeting. We are having a webinar. Thank you very much, Doctor Koye. We appreciate that piece of information is coming in very timely. All right, it's coming in very timely. Thank you so much. Um, our time is fast spent. We have to wrap up. I want to thank everybody who has been on this call from two o'clock till now. I um, I'm sure why we are still on is because uh, we. The the, 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 the the conversation, the lecture has been very captivating. Um, as said, Frank, Evon has been able to hold us under the spell of his uh, uh, delivery. Uh, well, a wordsmith, I call him a wordsmith all the time. A wordsmith always he will be. Um, and those states, congratulations for having this uh, very cerebral man as your as the end of your geographic information system and services after frank I, I can't thank you enough for this delivery and i believe we'll do this very soon very soon we'll do it again very soon thank very you. soon all right thank you so much anka is thanking you anka is thanking everybody on this call and i believe at this point i just want to say that um we are equally on live transmission on our youtube channel so I want to, this event has been, it's going to be uploaded there automatically as a video. So you can always go back to our YouTube channel, which is Anchor Architect, to replay and just stay, sit back, relax, and take in all the whole conversation all over again. We have other webinars that have posted videos that are posted on our YouTube channel. That's the Anchor Architect on YouTube. Please, when you are there, like our channel and also subscribe to our channel that we are building up that medium also to become a much viable entity in information dissemination there. Also, you can follow us on our IG handle, anchor underscore, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> anchor underscore architects, that's on our Instagram handle. Then on our Facebook handle is at anchor architects. Um, and if you need to make inquiries, yes, like uh, I've seen in the chat box, I think, if you need to make inquiries, could you type this for me in Berkeley? You could send a mail to info at anchor.ng.org. I take that again, info at anchor.ng.org. Or you could as well visit our website for more information on Anchor. That's www.forward/anchor-ng.org. That's www.forward/anchor-ng.org. That is our the Anchor website for more information on Anchor. Now, for inquiries, like I said, you can send a mail to info at anchor. No, info, sorry, info at anchor-ng.org. Info, sorry about that. Info at anchor-ng.org. Info at anchor-ng.org. Or you could send a chat or make a call to 09068-5563. I take that again. Zero nine zero six eight double five three zero four seven. That's the number of the PRO uh, media team content creator and scribe. The scribe and content creator's number. That's uh, Azubi K. Um, Francis Azubi K. And uh, you will be shocked. He's a final year student of Ambrose Ali University and is doing such a tremendous job alongside our student community. We have a large, massive student community. It's called the Anchor Student Ecosystem, massive. We have over five to six uh, ecosystems, uh, student ecosystem, WhatsApp platform, 
So we have to migrate to Telegram to accommodate them because they keep streaming in, because they see value in what Anchor is doing. Value, value is being added to their, 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 their pupillage that they are in, in schools there. So and, um, you can be sure that we are trying to, as good leaders, in the, as good leaders that we are in Anchor, we are preparing them for the future. So when the future arrives, they will successfully take over the baton and continue the profession of architecture, practice of architecture in Nigeria as a whole. So at this point, I want to thank and recognize, uh, because they say a tree does not make a forest. I want to recognize the crew and appreciate the crew that made this uh, broadcast a, a, a success. I want to start with... Um, Olua Femi Beckley here, Olua Femi B. Beckley here, who co-hosted with me. Thank you so much for always being there. I want to thank Amani Mbanefo, Victor, uh, who is here with me, and also Francis Abzubite that I just mentioned, and our very talented graphic designer, graphic artist in the uh, Anka Piero media team, Matthew Uyi. I, I know he's somewhere busy and he's uh, on his industrial training right now. He might not be on this call, but you are re well recognized and appreciated. Thank you all for making this a success. Thank you to the uh, Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects Executive Council. We thank you all. You heard from our national PRO, um, our national secretary, you heard from our national uh, president. We also had the voice of experience from our BOT chairman. You will surely agree with me that Anchor is truly the pillar of excellence in all ramifications. That is who we are. That is what we do. It is our work. Thank you very much at this time as we wrap up. And also, I want to thank again and welcome formally once again, architect Ayodeji Olorunda, FNIA. You are welcome to the uh, fold of anchor in an in advance. We welcome you warmly. Thank you, everybody, on this call. And um, and we are going to, the next the next webinar is already posted on the Acon CPD bulletin. The next webinar will be in on the March eighth of March, eighth of March, Tuesday, same Tuesday, same time, two p.m. Eighth of March. 2022, 8th of March, Tuesday, 2022, by 2 p.m. And it's, it's, it's the topic, the theme of our conversation will be earning your stripes as an architect. You need to, you, you don't want to miss that conversation. And our guest speaker is no other than the MD of ATO Architects Limited, architect Ekaite Fuja, FNIA. Uh, you don't want to miss that. So stay tuned on all our social media handles where we'll be. By tomorrow, the uh, advertorials will go out uh, going forward. So stay tuned, register, and be part of this life transforming and uh, capacity developing uh, webinars and lectures. Thank you very much. My name is Bodri Ogutore. National PRO for Association of Nigerian Chartered Architects signing off and I say I approve of this conversation, use of arbitration in dispute revolution. Thank you and God bless. Peace and we are out. Happy for France. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye.